Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the 401 Access Denied, brought to you by Delinea. My name is Joe Carson, Chief Security Scientist and Advisory CISO. And it's a pleasure to be here with you today and always excited to bring really educational topics and sometimes very important topics um, and amazing guests to share their stories. And today I'm joined with another amazing guest uh, on the episode and I'm uh, brought to you uh, with you. Uh, I've got Klaus on the episode today. So Klaus, do you want to yeah. give a little background about who you are, to give the audience a little bit of a kind of um, what you do, some of the fun things about yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm, um, yeah, my name is Klaus Agnolesi. I live in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, I've been um, involved with the community for, for, a lot, for a lot of years. I've been a uh, university professional for almost 20 years. And um, at some point I realized that what I really, really loved about being in the industry was all the community stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, so um, I tried to sort of work with that as a real job, mm -hmm. being a marketer a little bit. And then now I'm after that, I went, I went freelance. I'm, I'm interested in a lot of things that goes with the topic we're, we're talking about today mm -hmm. that. I never managed to become really, really specialized in anything. <laughs> and um, yeah, so now now I'm a, what do we call a freelance, a freelance infosec professional because then I can get to choose what I what I can do. Absolutely. Right. That's one of the great things. I mean, this has a very diverse, very amazing community. You know, uh, sometimes it can be a bit harsh, <laughs> especially in social. There is that harsh reality uh, yeah, when, when social side of things. But uh, when people come together, I... I always feel so many welcomed, open, you know, people will share, you know, their experiences, uh, which is always great. And you have a, a, an experience to share with the audience, something that you, you've been having to deal with. And, um, yeah, sure. and, 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 and many others in the industry also have, you know, very similar, um, maybe different impacts of lives. But uh, if you want to share kind of uh, one of the things that you, you've been uh, doing talks on and one of the things that you find out about uh, yourself recently. Yeah, I, uh... These last month, uh, I've been uh, doing a talk for at various conferences. Mm -hmm. um, that's called "Living with ADHD in Infosec" because that's what what that that, that that's what we're what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's uh, I guess neurodiversity and, yep. and ADHD in particularity. Yep. And I usually say that there is a, there is an overrepresentation of neurodiversity in mm -hmm. in IT and in IT security because one of the things that at least some ADHD is not not me, but some are good at that's the whole zooming in on a very mm -hmm. particular thing and then being really, really good at that or zooming in on a, on, on a particular incident and just keep on mm -hmm. investigating that until you well haven't haven't eaten for days because you are so so focused on that. That's the hyper focused thing that that some ADHD do ADHD Absolutely. do. So so I mean you you could say that that all the good parts or all the um what do you want to say the upsides mm -hmm. particular upsides of of the of the diagnosis that uh, the, those are very those, those are excellent advantages in many of the jobs in mm -hmm. in our line of business so in that way yeah there's no representation definitely absolutely and i mean i've had uh, previous guests you know who, who've also shared their story and you know and and you know i've had others you know that they're also in, in different areas where you know even autism as well um, mm -hmm. is being used in the industry. Um, people who have, you know, problems with even, you know, uh, getting in, in, you know, talking, uh, socializing skills as well. It's yeah. also been some people, uh, you know, find that challenging. Um, and uh, this industry does have the, the ability that no matter what type of, you know, um, you know, uh, let's say kind of diagnosis they might have, that there's always an area to, to work in, to, to contribute and to add and to, 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 to you know, provide that knowledge and value that uh, everyone has. Um, yeah. you got diagnosed quite late, I believe. Uh, yeah, I did. I did because it, it's, it, it's in, in a way it's, it's a weird story because mm -hmm. when I was young, I, I was, I, I took my education as, as many people and that wasn't really a problem. And then mm -hmm. as I grew older, I just found it harder and harder to, to concentrate. And mm -hmm. I had no idea what was wrong and it just went worse, it became worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And then, um, for some reason, I'm not really sure why, or then I went to the doctor and uh, asked him, well, can I have ADHD? And then he presented me to this um, test called ASRS mm -hmm. made by WHO, where there are like 20 things that, mm -hmm. that is 20 traits, 20 traits that are normal human traits, mm -hmm. nothing particular about them, but it, they, it's more in the degree you have them, right? Mm -hmm. then, 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 then a sort of, 
absolutely there's there's a skill there's the skill of kind of you know of uh the impact it has yeah yeah and then 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 when i saw that that it's it, it, it was really weird because a lot of the things didn't necessarily have anything to do with adhd but it's, mm -hmm. it's something like how good are you at finishing a task for instance mm -hmm. what does that what does that have to do with anything hmm, well it turns out it has a lot of things to do with yeah. something <laughs> because they with many people who has who has adhd they are not so interested in finishing things they are interested mm -hmm. in and that goes for me in particular i'm i'm I like having, I like getting ideas. I, I like mm -hmm. to do new things. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do, you know, do, do the same thing over and over because that's just, that's just boring. And that's uh, one of the, some of the issues I've been having in, in my career are um, finding it harder and harder to have, to, to keep the job, to keep a job. Okay. And, and, and what, what has always been my problem is that that's the concentration. And it turns out that when you are not really good at concentration, uh, concentrating and, and you, end up in a job where concentration is important, then you're not mm -hmm. the most efficient worker. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also over time, you know, it gets a little bit boring doing the same. So, yeah. And I think it's, 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 it comes down to a lot of times of what, what's the, how things are measured, um, really that sell to me. And, and, and you do find, you know, there's, there's different parts of our industry where, you know, jobs might be time-based, um, mm -hmm. and, and that could be, you know, but, uh, but if you're getting into where it's basically understanding and, and, you know, putting it into uh, sometimes, you know, awareness or workshops and stuff, then they can be very different, whether it might be uh, more delivery, you know, where it's not focused around the time side of things, but it's focused around more of the activity itself. Hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think it, it has become evident both uh, during COVID and, and mm -hmm. also after COVID, uh, during COVID, because that's where <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of the companies were shut down and everybody had work, had to work from home and some people found mm -hmm. out that they were actually doing very very well with that and then being forced back to work and they were like why do i have to be here <laughs> when it was so I, I i actually have to talk to people again i want I, one of the things during covid so many people were talking about that they never mm -hmm. got to see anyone and i was like this is so nice <laughs> i don't have yeah. to talk to anyone it is really really cute it's really really fantastic yeah. And for me, I, I'm, 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 you know, this is actually one of the reasons why the whole podcast started was I'm a, you know, very, I like to, to network. I like to talk to people. I like mm -hmm. to share stories and, and, and experiences. And when COVID started, yeah. uh, but, that's but, but, ultimately but, but, one of the reasons why the podcast was actually introduced. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's complex. I, I do, I do like to talk to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, besides Dublin, I, you know, yeah. I, I did my talk, I talked to people, then I, I became very, very, very tired, took a nap, and then I was ready again. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's what, sometimes what it is understanding is, is, so how you can, you know, deal with it or what things you can do to change in order to, to make it much easier. Um, so when you were diagnosed, what, what, what was the realization or what, so what were you, what were you thinking about? Or um, did, did it come to realization that, you know, it, you, this is actually how it's impacted your life for a long time? And getting diagnosed late because I also had I had some I mean I I'm not I don't have DHT I have dyslexia um, and I wasn't actually understood until way late uh, in my later you know university years when I started realizing that I had to find a way to deal with it because yeah. I do a lot of writing <laughs> so yeah, well. and it, and it comes across uh, but it means that for me I do have to sometimes read my stuff multiple times. And check and you know verify where you know um, uh, where I make the mistakes, where I switch words and letters around. Mm -hmm. um, so you start understanding about you know what things you can do in order to change your, the way you've done things in the past yeah. to deal with that situation. Um, how how did you deal with it, and what what things did you seek for help, or did you you know find others who are in a similar situation? I mean, around the time I was diagnosed, I um, I had a little bit of an existential, existential crisis because. Mm -hmm. I am, um, yeah, I have a car like many do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I found myself uh, getting, di getting distracted and, and, oh, you know, just not seeing things right in front of me. And, mm -hmm. and it, and it was becoming more, I, I was, a, well, I was about to, to, to think that, well, maybe this is it. Maybe I'm selling my car and maybe I'm not doing this anymore because mm -hmm. I just, I just wouldn't be able to live with, you know, killing someone or hurting someone bad. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, I got diagnosed and one of the, um, it was a little bit strange in the sense that the psychiatrist I was referred to said that he had his doubts whether 
uh, whether I was uh, whether it was bad enough, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But he he came to the conclusion that it meant a lot to me. So well, so so he figured out that well, let's try with try with medi try with medication, mm -hmm. and that's that's the that's the one thing who has who has helped the most. Okay, say, to begin with, because it, it's. It's really it, it, it's it's really weird because um, uh, my my body is low on dopamine, so mm -hmm. it, it 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 there is a lot of it. It takes a lot for me to get you know excited about something. It, it, it that's mm -hmm. a common trait for some. Mm -hmm. And what the what the medicine does is that it uh, it it uh, it's it's called listex amphetamine. So mm -hmm. you know it's it is not exactly amphetamine, but it. It gives my brain a kick in the butt, and that's what it needs because it's just um, it's slow. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm unmedicated, then I'm like eighty percent effective or something like that, and 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 there is, and and it's and it's weird to to think about that that was my default setting, and I didn't mm -hmm. realize that that's I, I didn't work well enough, <laughs> so okay. to speak. So, and and what, what changes did you make yourself? Did you change like sometimes maybe even how long you spend in something or when you work in things? Uh, sometimes people have a certain like, you know, cycle that they're most optimum and not. Um, is there anything that you find that uh, did work better for you um, in certain tasks or certain uh, length of times of, of, of doing uh, you know, things? Well, it, it, it helped in one um, one important way, and that is that that it was easier for me to concentrate. And then hmm. I've, I've had the medicine for, I, I yeah, I, I took it right from the beginning, so like three, four years. And and do, dosage been, I've, I've been trying a little bit uh, of different thing with dose mm -hmm. with dosages. I just recently upped my doses a little bit, and that has really made a huge impact because then yeah, then I can then I can concentrate better mm -hmm. because the thing is with, with ADHD and that's also what I, the reason why I went to the doctor to begin with, it becomes um, worse, so to speak, over mm -hmm. time in that it gets harder, harder to concentrate over time. Mm -hmm. And then, and so, so it's per perfectly normal, I guess, to, a, to adjust medication. Um, mm -hmm. And, and also that takes a little bit of time. L luckily I'm there, there aren't many downsides effects to it I, okay there, there, there are a number of people that, that had that has the same diagnosis that that yeah yeah the medicine is good but there are so many down so many side effects that they can't can't really that, do yeah, it anyway yeah so the, the so benefits anyway, outweigh the, the 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 you know what all well, the negatives outweigh the benefits in some cases so and and, and, and also medication it doesn't uh, level it out of course mm -hmm. but but it it makes my my brain work better along with um but I, I I'm not sure what to call it. It's called the there is an a um, organization, I guess it's called in, in an Indian organization mm -hmm. um, that uh, that's called the Art of Living. Okay. And and it's weird in the sense that when you look at them, they're a little bit like a cult, mm -hmm. but um, but they have a Danish branch or at least a Danish a Danish branch that does the 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 the, the technique that that mm -hmm. this guru invented, and um, it's breathing exercises that okay. that that it, that, well, that, 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 that you really I really don't know how it how it works, but I mm -hmm. I, I I talked to a guy who who had done well who had who had done it some years ago, and he he had a little bit of ADHD on diagnosis, and he said when 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 he when he did those exercises, his 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 brain was just empty, and that's also mm -hmm. one of the one of the things that 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 there was always the brain is always hammering on about mm -hmm. something that's more or less relevant. And, yeah. and when I do those exercises, it just the silence, yeah. and it's fantastic. There's a there's a fantastic book that um, I read. Uh, it must have been when it was last year, early last year, which is called Breathe, which is mm. all about you know the the impact of uh, breathing exercises, and actually there's a whole technique into it because how long you know, you know breathing through your mouth or your nose will yeah. impact how much oxygen you get to your brain. Um, and you know, there's exercises. So even, you know, from reading that book, one of the things I do is when I'm actually doing my walks to the, to the office and back is I try to do more of the breathing through my nose as much as possible mm -hmm. and also holding it, uh, as, as, as much as possible. So it also calms you down. It also is good for your, you know, um, uh, your energy levels as well. It may, makes you get more relaxed also. 
So yeah, that's it. You know, breathing does have a massive impact um, yeah. uh, in your life. If if you learn the exercises, even doing it, you know, uh, you know, a couple, even just you know, a couple of times, or even just once a day, can actually have a big impact to you. And the, the funny thing with this is that that well, I, I went I went on a weekend co- on weekend course when when mm-hmm. three days in a row that was education and and or they were they were teaching us about how to do exercise and talking a little bit how mm-hmm. to different how how to how to breathe because there are when I'm doing the exercise I'm doing it a different in a different mm-hmm. in different ways there is mm-hmm. an there is an Indian uh, or I guess it's, it's it's related to yoga um, yep. a breathing method called Uya where mm-hmm. where, you, where where you sort of do this breathing with a yep. Like that, yep. and I have no idea why <laughs> I'm going to do that, but th- that's that's what the guy says, so that's what I do, right? Yep. So, and and the, and they said that do the course that it was that it was good, and again, I have no idea why or how or whatever. Um, and yep. and also doing the, it, it's about being in a rhythm. That's part of it. Correct. And uh, and, the ti- and the timing, the timing is important. Yeah. You're absolutely right. it, it, it's about counting and timing and mm-hmm. timing and counting and in and out and in a in special in a special way. Mm-hmm. And it also impacts the the rest of the day, yeah. uh, the, the way you do your breathing. And in general, I'm not terribly aware of how it affects me, but I, yeah. I get I guess it do. And and there's there's a couple of you know when I was in the past year, you know, especially during COVID, um, when basically you know you you were uh, many of us were alone for long periods of time by ourselves, you know, um, either with family or or you're spending those times you know uh, working alone. Um, and there's a couple of significant things I took uh, at the time. And, and one was reading the book Breathe, which was fantastic. I'll definitely make sure for the audience to get it in show notes. Uh, another one that I read at the time was also Why We Sleep, which is also related to Breathe. It was also about making sure you get enough uh, proper rest um, uh, that you, you know, in, you know, even the point where having afternoon naps or daytime naps, uh, power naps, we sometimes refer to them as power naps, can make yeah. a massive difference. Um, I even took one today because it was, it's, for me, it's, it's a long working day. So for me to make sure that I have enough energy to, to, to make sure that I get to the end, um, yeah. a power nap makes a massive difference. It yeah. just takes the mind yeah. away and breathing and sometimes even yoga. Um, I sometimes even play the a certain white noise in the background just to put me kind of, you know, to take, it will take my mind off things. Um, so that why we sleep was, it was a, a, a more important difference, um, to the even point where I actually measure it much more, uh, and try to understand about, you know, uh, am I getting enough in the, in the nighttime or do I need to find some time also to, to re-energize? Um, have you found, you know, in additional to breathing, is there anything that you've done around even the sleeping side of things to make sure that you're getting enough rest? And uh, no, because ADHD is, um, it's two things. It's attention mm-hmm. deficit and it's hyperactivity. Mm-hmm. And you would have both, and you have, and you have, and you can have one of them. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, uh, when you only have attention deficit, then back in the day, and and also, and see to to a degree here in Denmark, but not mm-hmm. globally in the U.S., it's called ADD. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But 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 they the the way they are they, the way they've categorized it in the U.S. is that they are calling everything ADHD because it's the same thing. It, mm-hmm. It's just the symptoms that are different, mm-hmm. and. Um, I know a couple of guys, people who have ADHD, ADHD with with, mm-hmm. with age, with hyperactivity, and yep. many of them have. A, one one of my one of my friends, he, he drinks chamomile every mm-hmm. every evening just to calm him down, to calm mm-hmm. him down. But I sleep like a baby. I've always. Done that. <laughs> I'm really good. I'm really good at falling asleep, and then you know, I got, I, then um, I can wake up a little bit during the night and then mm-hmm. fall asleep again. But but I always, I can always fall asleep. I can fall asleep extremely fast. Mm-hmm. So, so in that way, I'm it's 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 atypical, and and for some weird reason, I never ever, well, almost never mm-hmm. can remember anything of my dreams. Oh, that's that's, that's, that's that, that, that is that is so weird. But that's that's just so weird. yeah. I think in, when I was reading the book uh, about the sleeping, is is that there's a certain um, uh, also the process before you sleep. Uh, is that uh, it's about kind of making the preparations and also how you sleep as well can also make mm-hmm. a big big difference to, to whether you dream or not because uh, the, there's these different sleep you know when you're in REM that's where you tend to have dreams but yeah. uh, if you're not if you're bypassing that and just going straight to deep sleep or light sleep mm-hmm. then you tend to not dream a lot so there's a process that it's in there so I definitely highly recommend you know uh, taking a look at it if you haven't read it um, it's definitely a very 
intriguing. It definitely helped give oh, me yeah. more balance in, 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 in my kind of understanding of things. Yeah. But we, I, I, we spend I, I was, we spend a third of our life sleeping, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's an yeah. important part of our life. Yeah, definitely. I, I just had a theory that that maybe mm. I was doing the REM sleep, but I just somehow forgot it. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah. So I, definitely, would be something. One of the things that you know, did you find other people that you can relate with? There's other people that you contacted, or mm -hmm. like a community or group uh, that you can well, share. There, 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 here, here in Denmark, there is, and also mm -hmm. in other countries, there is uh, ADHD. Um, interest groups or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it volunteer group non for non-profit groups that that does education they have like a knowledge bank and and the coping strategies and stuff like that and mm -hmm. also they they write a bit about a uh, diagnosis uh, mm -hmm. how, how you're getting diagnosed in on different in different parts of your life and all that yep. and they um where i live they have um this uh the networking cafes or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it every now and then uh, where where I meet other adults with ADHD and and that it's really it's striking how how different how different um, mm -hmm. uh, people's symptoms are because last time I was there people there were there were a bunch of people who were talking a lot of, a lot about how they how they handled their um, their temper mm -hmm. and and I I don't have any temper at all so that's that's just you well, see the, the that, that's that's in, me yeah. <laughs> so. But it, but I but I understand that can be hard if you do mm -hmm. if you are a hard tempered or have have a have a big temper then it can be hard to control it because you know it's stupid mm -hmm. and all that. But again, I've never tried that, so I don't know how it is. Okay. And what how has it changed your work life? I mean, what what things have you have you find something that, that interests you more um, afterwards, or have you changed uh, uh, some it, of the areas that you're working in? I would I would say after I got diagnosed, I read a lot about it. Mm -hmm. I got I educated myself, and then then I tried to f somehow get get to get to know myself know myself better, mm -hmm. and in the way in in these ways I don't really know ex exactly know how you do that, but I guess yeah. that's yeah. So, and, and, but that, 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 I, I guess you do that by studying. Yeah, yeah. You once yeah, it's it's sometimes just, you know finding out uh, once you once you realize you know it, it's it's always good to to get to understand uh, some of the details. Um, but but to, to me, it's it's very much about get, getting the diagnosis made me understand so much more. For example, mm -hmm. for example, the first job I had uh, was with Deloitte here in here in Denmark, and mm -hmm. when I had been in the office for like six months or so, they moved into the new fancy steel glass uh, mm -hmm. building, where where back in, back then it was uh, it still is a little bit of open office spaces all the, all yeah. everywhere, and I just pretty fast realized that I couldn't, I couldn't do that. <laughs> it didn't yeah. work. I, it, it, I, w I was just too prone to any kind of noise, visually or auditive. It just, I just couldn't concentrate. But yeah, even, like, even I had the same, um, yeah. I ended up, uh, you know, had my own office for a long time. Um, and I basically had a lot of, you know, fo a lot of my work is very focused. I have to kind of pay attention, you know, writing mm -hmm. and, 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 and research. And uh, I also, I, at one point, had moved to an open office, and I find that the the noise, um, you know, even though they do a lot to try and you know do the uh, ambience and you know the, the 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 walls and stuff to to soak up the noise, but any noise distracted me. Yeah. Um, I and so that's why I still today I I, I do a lot of my work with uh, headsets on, mm -hmm. just to try and make sure that any of the noise that I try to to, to filter it out because it becomes a distraction for me. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's something that I use. I just trying to find a way uh, to deal with it. So one of the things you, you, you do the talk um, uh, and you've done it a couple of uh, conferences and you've got some conferences you're talking at. Yeah. What's the main elements? What's what's the cons you know, the, the, the consensus of the, the, the talk that you do? Um, and so what what do you want uh, others to learn from it? it you know, maybe there's people in the audience who, who might relate and might kind of find that they are in a similar situation. Mm. Where you know they're in their career and they're finding that oh, well, I've got similar symptoms or similar uh, things that I'm finding. Um, yeah, I, 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 I would I, I would say that the um, the message or all message is that it's it's okay to mm -hmm. have ADHD and and I I did the reason why I started doing it was really basically just to talk, tell people about ADHD. That's mm -hmm. and and share and share my story and all that and then. And I come to realize that uh, to many people, it's um, it's just great to to have like a role model. I don't see myself as a role model, but but some people, some people do. 
mm-hmm. and and also um this this weird thing happens when you stand on a, on up on a stage and you and you tell people like pretty um confidential stuff mm-hmm. you would say then then people come to you afterwards and they feel they know you and then they pour the, then they pour their heart out and they're they're telling you stuff mm-hmm. that don't that you know maybe their spouse doesn't even know that yeah <laughs> and that's um yeah, that that's happened a few times, and uh, I did, that takes a little, little getting getting used to, I would say. But absolutely, but, you know, I think I think one of the important things that you're bringing out is that you know, it, I mean, one of the things I I grew up in Belfast. And Belfast was a place where you never shared anything. You know, you <laughs> kept everything inside. And, you know, it's yeah. like you know, you, in order to be a man, you had to keep it all inside and never let it out. And over the years, kind of you know, you know. It's important to be able to 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 open up and share, and because yeah. it's it takes the weight off a lot of people, uh, and that you know I think there's this emphasis sometimes on people going to see psychologists that you know that it's a bad thing, but it should not be seen as a bad thing. It's something that you know their 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 job is to listen, yeah. and and for you to share and open up and and tell things that you typically would not be want you know tell in public, and it's important to say that you know it's okay. It's actually normal. Those things are normal, and I think that's one of the great things is that you're you're coming out and sharing it to show that people live with this, and and, and it is a normal thing. And we should yeah. not, you know, try to hide it or to put it in a closet and you know forget about it. That we have to share, it and that you know, many people, you know, I think what you're saying is that other people have, you know, maybe different things that they're dealing with, and they shouldn't be afraid to 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 you know, bottle up and and. No. They're seeing, you know, you as an opportunity to, to talk to um, yeah. and 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 uh, listen because you're able to open up as well. Yeah, pe- pe- people tend to ask me whether they should get get a diagnosis mm-hmm. or not and all that. And what I used to say about that is that if you have a problem, then get a diagnosis because once you get that stamp, mm-hmm. yeah, you, it it can't be taken away. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's not always a good stamp to have. So think think twice before getting it. That's mm-hmm. what I usually say. Because yeah. some, yeah. some things can change. No, exactly. Uh, you know, some some of the, the things you can do as well. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, for for instance, I have um, health uh, insurance that I mm-hmm. that I that I did before I got diagnosed, and I'm you know I'm doing what I can to keep hold of it because I probably can't get it again. Yep, uh, it's a, it's another thing. Is yeah, it's it's uh, some activities. Uh, um, you know, health insurance, you know, um, there's a lot of things that, uh, that, you know, it becomes a challenge. So, mm. but, um, but yeah, I, I, I keep, I am, it's, it's, it's strange because I, 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 there's a lot of people who have, who have, who have come to me after the talk or just in general mm-hmm. saying that it's so good of you to be open about it and how, and, and they are really admired, admiring, in, mm-hmm. admiring, admiring me being so open, but you know, maybe it's it's also about what you what you think is um, is some is something that's hard mm-hmm. to hard to talk about. And for some reason, it's not. I don't feel it's that big a deal, honestly. Mm-hmm. But 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 you know, it, it's it's good to to talk about and 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 being a role model. I'm I'm the one to. Well, if people see me as see me as a role model, I'm the one talking about it first because one of my um, messages in the talk is also that people should start talking about it and and also mm-hmm. to employers that it should be okay to talk to your employer about the not necessarily ADHD but mm-hmm. as i said before, as i said um with the traits in in IT and IT security that there there are people that, there are a lot of people in IT mm-hmm. and IT security that are not like people are most right yeah and and they they oftentimes have different needs mm-hmm. In different ways, maybe maybe some of them just really really hate being in the office, and maybe 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 some of them just you know my my brain maybe maybe their brain only works at night, and that's where they want to work and all that. And 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 really, as as an employer, you should only think of one finger think of mm-hmm. think of one thing. You 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 should have one one thing in mind, or at least a couple of things in mind, and that that is whether the whether the employees performs like like they should, yeah. right? They, they they do what they do what they're supposed to do at the, at the exact time at, or at mm-hmm. the at the time in the right quality and literally anything but that you shouldn't care about where where they work how they work when they work who cares yeah and that's one of the things we were saying you know, earlier about you know the types of work and and when you work and yeah. what you know how long you work in things yeah. is that organizations we you know at the end you know people are not robots we we don't just yeah. have one action you know and 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 
we have to make sure that we're finding out how to make sure that we're working around uh, the body clock because our body clocks are not all the same. No. Um, and to your point, you know, for me, um, I work really well in the mornings, uh, need a bit of a nap and, uh, you know, a power nap uh, during the day and they work really well in the evening. So mm. for me, basically, I, I, you know, sometimes need to make sure that when I'm working, uh, that time frame is the most optimum for what my brain is the most uh, effective. Um, and then also the environment around as well. I have to, I know the environment which uh, gets me into also reducing the distractions, being able to focus, how long I can focus on things. Mm. Um, but you're absolutely right, is that organizations, you know, companies need to make sure that they you know, don't treat everyone exactly you know, the, the same expectations, that we all have these different uh, things that we have to deal with and yeah, yeah, they and need the, to be the, flexible. The, the, yeah, exactly. They should be open to that because mm. I read somewhere, I'm really bad at remembering numbers and details mm. and all that, but but when you have ADHD, there is a much higher chance of getting of getting of getting fired. Mm -hmm. And and one of and one of the things that helps ADHD us the most is the flexibility of when and when and where to work. Yeah. And, and sometimes and, and it's, and, it's finding and, and the right role for those uh, uh people as well. Because yeah, you know, it means that not all roles uh, should be doing the same, you know, uh, different people benefit in certain areas or different parts of the industry. So it's, it's finally making sure that the role that is suited to, to their um, ability uh, and uh, uh, is also matched properly. Hmm. Yeah. And, and, and as an employer, do you, you, you have, you have an interest mm -hmm. in not firing people. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, so if you can invite people to be more open about what, what their, what, what the, what their needs are, mm -hmm. then, then then you can avoid it, which is good financially and also for the for the person. It's it's um, uh, it, they it, it's a, it's another you know bad thing in their in their career they don't need. Yeah. Right. So so for the audience, one of the things that you know just to kind of summarize, what 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 would be some of the things you'd recommend to the audience to um, if they're finding themselves something you know they need to talk to someone even you know um, or that uh, they think they might, you know, have uh, a similar situation. Um, is there any resources or any places you would point them to that would, you know, be able to help them? Um, I, I, I talk, I talk about, about what, the, what, the, what, what, what it has meant for me and, that, and, mm -hmm. and in, in a way that, that, that one, one of the things I found very, very hard after being diagnosed was that the explanation, but is it, but, it's an explanation, but isn't it, but is, is it an excuse? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I have this challenge, but does it mean that I'm, I, I will, that, 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 that is just a way it, it will, it will always happen with me or can I do something of my own to, mm -hmm. to mitigate that? So what I used to say is that people should get to know each other. And that's, I know, I know that's, that, that's not mm -hmm. unique for new diversity. That's, that's the same thing as, mm -hmm. as you talked about before. It, it comes with the gray, with the gray beard, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the more you know about yourself, the better you can mitigate. Yeah. And, and the more you can, and more, the more you can tell people up front what your needs are and mm -hmm. what's, and what you don't like and what you do like. And, and, and we are all, yeah, we are Northerners, right? Yep. And, and. It's, and it's about, I, I, you know, I know. I know it's the same thing in our, in Ireland. You do, you just say you just say things like they are because you don't you don't really care about all, all that shrink wrapping bullshit, man. Who, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm too I'm too old for shit like that, right? Yeah. So um, and and that you know just just being frank mm -hmm. uh, about about what you need and what you don't need in your life, and then 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 it's then then it's easier. Then it's easier yeah. to cope, and, and it's also easier for for other people to uh, to live with. Um, Absolutely. My, 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 my wife doesn't have a diagnosis, but what I really, really love about her is that uh, she's very, she, she's, she's very open. She says, she says exactly what's on her mind. If she's happy, I know. If she's sad, if she's, yeah. if, if she's angry, I know. It's, it's not, it's, she's never passive aggressive. She's, I mean, she, it, it, she's very, very easy in that, in that way. And I know a lot of um, men and other women, of course, are not that, are, are not that lucky, <laughs> but uh, but it, it just proves my point that that uh, being being frank about mm -hmm. about what you can and when and what you don't can and what you can't do yeah. and that's yeah. uh, that's being uh, being being you know I think it's sometimes it's being honest to yourself as well you know it's it's yeah. it's because you're what you're doing it starts with yourself yes yeah, so you're making you know you're focusing on yourself before uh, because that's the most important thing is that once you know your capabilities and know your limitations. 
Yeah, um, that, yeah, you, can that, set, that, that, you can set the framework for that. Yeah, and that's exactly also why I became a freelancer because mm -hmm. you asked before what impact it has had on my career, right. and um, it had it had had some had some impact in the sense that that I I I I, I want I tried to change my career into something that was less um, concentration heavy. Mm -hmm. So I went from doing normal security advisory into doing marketing, which mm -hmm. is which which for, first to me was a little bit of a I, w I wouldn't say a slap in the face, but it was a little bit of, of, of surprise that mm -hmm. to, to, to see yourself first as a techie and then as a marketing person, mm -hmm. because uh, the way most people in Infosec see marketers is, is, is that they do annoying things. But you know, what, 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 what we do, uh, but pointed towards the community, that's, uh, that's also marketing, but you know, it's, it, it brings value to people and it's not annoying. It's actually helpful. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and I think so, it's also so wanted you know, to do that more. I think it's also important to have technical people in marketing. That's it's it's a critical role yeah, because it is. It is. Yeah, 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 because 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 we we build bridges, right? Yes. We, we 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 make your other marketers understand what what the hell we're doing here. What's the need? What's the yeah. use case? Why yeah. why is it important? Uh, yeah. and the, what what and it the, is and what it is not. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the, yeah, and then after going into marketing, I thought you know things was was great, and then then my. Uh, then my 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 also clever wife said that well 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 as as I said I I, I had I had some problems with keeping a job and she she's mm -hmm. always been fearing mm -hmm. me to get fired again and again and just were, were, she was pretty sure that it would happen again mm -hmm. even after me changing into marketing and of course she was right mm -hmm. then 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 after that she was she was saying that well you have ADHD you say you have ADHD you say that that your brain is that your brain is different then you also have to do some things different right yes. Because if you don't, if you if you keep on doing the same thing, guess what? The same thing will happen. You can have the same results. It's so so, so so she was the one suggesting that I that that I went freelance. Mm -hmm. I had I hadn't think I hadn't thought of that myself. Uh, yeah. But but it makes perfect sense because then I can be totally selective what I want to do yeah. and what I don't want to do, and you, I can, you, I can you, follow you, my interest. Correct. For you instance, can follow I've, I've always been what you into, want to do. I've I've always been into. Uh, using game uh, games mm -hmm. as as a tr as a way of training things. So so mm -hmm. right now, one of the things I'm pushing is is doing incident response uh, uh, mm -hmm. training as a role playing game. Because mm -hmm. guess what? It's damn fun. And and yeah. that's and that, that unlike, unlike some some tabletop tabletops that are, that, are, that are just dull. So I was figuring, well, if you have to do it anyway because of NIST two compliance or whatever, mm -hmm. then why not do it fun? Absolutely, so. fantastic. Um, many thanks for coming on and sharing your story. I think it's really important, and I think it's you know it's lifting that you know the ability you know that it's okay not to be like everyone else, and it's okay to share, and that uh, you know you know it, it's important to make sure that we also you know are, are true to ourselves and make sure that we you know we know uh, what what is the best things for ourselves and how to sometimes change our lifestyles in order to be more optimum and and, and be better. So. Um, again, many thanks for coming on. It's, it's great, and, and yeah. uh, also yeah. great yeah. Can I telling you as always. Can I just have a final, fi a final thing I want to say? Absolutely. Because there, are, there are so many things I want to have said, want to have said about mm -hmm. what ADC is and it isn't. Mm -hmm. But um, the talk I did at Besides Dublin in May was recorded, mm -hmm. and it's on their YouTube. Oh, fantastic. And also, I'm, yeah, and also I'm going to Wild West Hagen Fest in the U.S. and doing the talk for the first time in the U.S. in, in mid-October, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that as well. Fantastic. So, uh, we'll definitely make sure one, one of the things we'll make sure in the show notes is that we'll, you know, put the link to the, uh, the B-Sides Dublin yes. and we'll also make sure that the link to the talk in, uh, the, uh, Wild Wild Hacking Fest, which is also so many great people going there. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 last, last year when I was working for another company, I, mm. I, I did a talk there and I really wanted to go, but my boss did, wouldn't let me. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I even had a coffee date, coffee date with Dave, with, with Dave Kennedy and uh, uh, Dave's right. amazing. I, re yeah. I really, I really, yeah, I really look forward to meeting him. Uh, yeah. He's, he's been, a, he's been a, a guest on the show previously and uh, course, he's yeah. always, course, yeah. yeah, he's, he's always amazing to talk to him. Yeah. He was yeah, yeah. great, great friends, huge uh, mentor and uh, always yeah, and, great yeah, and, a, and, a, and a good kind hearted person. And that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's he, cool. he's always he's always, always going to my home. He's always going to Belfast. So yes, <laughs> so he's got a he's got a big big uh, uh, was it passion for uh, DeLorean cars for Back to the Future. So oh yeah yeah, and, yeah. I, and I grew up right yeah, next sure to the factory. <laughs> so yeah yeah yeah. Did, did, did you see that that he tweeted recently that that he got a speeding ticket or a speeding no he didn't warning? I have no I have not it was, <laughs> uh, that's that'll be I have to check and see later. Check, so check, on, so. check the photo also 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 <laughs> what what what, oh. what 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 he made the officer ride. 
I yes, I yes, I, I did see that. Yes, I did see that. Was actually quite funny. So absolutely. So, but Klaus, it's been fantastic having you on, um, and many thanks again. And we'll make sure that uh, some of the details are on this, the show notes. And so for the audience, um, definitely, you know, always, you know, if if you feel, you know, find someone to reach out to, find someone to talk to. Um, it's it's always better to to make sure that you know you're able to, you know, and even if you're on the other side, you know, uh, be a listener, be somebody who who can be a mentor or be someone. Uh, who can you know uh, show their, their 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 experiences and share some things they're going through because it's always yeah. better to share and, and, and don't keep it in. Yeah, um, yeah, be a, be a, yeah, be a role model, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So again, this is the four hundred one access tonight podcast. I'm the host uh, Joe Carson, and uh, again, we have episodes every two weeks. We have amazing guests, interesting topics, and we're really looking to share as much knowledge out there uh, to really make the world a safer place and make it a, a, a place that everyone can 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 you know participate and and share their uh, their wisdom and knowledge with so take care stay safe and all the best